So back in the day, if you needed to get some film, you went by the film's ASA rating. That rating was essentially a rating of sensitivity to light. So for example, this canister that I have here, it has a rating of 800. Yet in 1947, all that changed when the International Organization for Standardization was formed. Currently, this organization has members from 164 nations coming together to basically standardize industrial and commercial practices. And they basically identified the sensitivity of cameras and that's where we get the ISO that we know um, as part of the exposure triangle. Now, for our purposes, just keep in mind that ISO basically makes your picture brighter or darker depending on the number that you have set. I'll actually provide you with the ISO scale right here like I did with the f-stop scale. So basically, the lower the ISO number, the less sensitive your camera will be to light. The, as you go up the scale, the higher the ISO, the more sensitive your camera sensor will be to light. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, ISO is not that glamorous, but what it does do is that it saves your butt when you want to crank up your shutter speed. Now, cranking up your shutter speed will make your picture darker, and that's when ISO comes in to save you. So you bring your ISO up, and you'll get a brighter picture, allowing you to use a faster shutter speed. Now, keep in mind, the whole point of the exposure triangle is that all the corners are connected. So it's a balancing act. You may push your ISO a little higher to bring your shutter speed to then open your f-stop. So it's basically a balancing act between the three. And that's what's so interesting about photography because you're enthralled in the actual making of the picture between the balancing of your ISO, shutter speed, and f-stop. Now this goes without saying, but the awesome part about digital photography is that you can change your ISO in camera. No need to shoot your entire row or all your pictures in one particular ISO. So you can crank up and crank down as you see fit. So every single one of the corners of the exposure triangle comes with a visual trait, right? So f-stop has depth of field. Uh, as you change your f-stop, your depth of field changes. Shutter speed, uh, as you change it, you change the motion blur, right? That's the visual component of each. Whereas ISO, as you bring the ISO higher, what you're going to get is grain. Well, in film, you used to get grain as your ISO number. Let me see if I can do this. See that 160 right there? This is the ISO rating for this particular roll of film. This is a 160 roll of film. So I wouldn't use this particular roll of film in an indoor scenario because it would be kind of dark. So I would push it, rather not push it, but I would actually go to a higher rating of say 400, 1200, or 3200. So in, in darker situations. Now, this grain in the digital world is called noise. This noise that you see becomes more and more apparent the higher up the scale you go in the ISO. So be mindful of this trade-off. Now cameras nowadays have gotten very advanced in their algorithm and how they treat uh, this digital noise, this digital amplification, if you will. Depending on the manufacturer that you're using, you may want to test out your camera. And a great way of doing that is basically taking the lens cap of your camera, turning the camera on rather, take the lens cap of your camera, put it right on the camera, and take a picture with every single one of the ISO settings, starting with, you know, 100 all the way up to as high as you want. Then basically take a look at your pictures and see the characteristics of your ISO and it'll really give you a good idea of what your noise signature is on each one of the ISOs. So that way, you know, if you're getting a clean 400 ISO or if you're getting a clean 800 ISO, you know that in, if you're in a, in a situation, you can push it to that. 
I think that's a great way to know, to get to know your camera. As you get to learn your camera a little bit better and you get to learn your camera's ISO performance and noise signature, be very careful with going high on your ISO because the higher ISOs uh, affect your camera's dynamic range and image reproduction. And I can imagine that in, in the near future, it's going to be something that we don't even talk about anymore where, you know, ISO, you know, these cameras will be able to damn near look into the night. I know that the camera that I'm using, the Sony a7S II is a total beast at night. And, you know, I've gone as high as 10,000 ISO um, and I've still gotten a, a, a manageable picture. Getting a picture is better than not getting a picture. So sometimes, you know, they are software that you can use to minimize um, the noise uh, signature in pictures. Interestingly enough, as I was researching ISO on their website, I'll put a link down below. As of March, 2019, they actually updated the ISO rating to include higher values due to the technological advances in modern digital cameras. So when I'm out with my camera, I tend to usually go through a process. So I will, you know, think of the lighting situation and I will set my ISO first and then I'll go in for other questions like, do I want to separate the background or do I want to include the background? And there is my f-stop setting. Then I ask myself, do I want to blur uh, motion or anything that's moving or do I want to freeze anything that's moving? And then I have my shutter speed. So yeah, that's usually how I go about it. I interchange a little bit between uh, shutter speed and and, um, and f-stop depending on my subject but basically I start with my ISO and then I work my way around the triangle uh, that way so additionally Henry Carroll in this book talks about 400 being a great ISO to start on an overcast day so he reasons that if you start with 400 and you basically ask yourself is today brighter than an overcast day or is today uh, darker than an overcast day? So he's basically saying start with 400 and go up from 400 if you need to or go down from 400 if you need to. So now the other thing to consider is your camera's sensor size. So you have one inch, micro four thirds, APS-C, full frame, and the largest being medium format. All of these sensor sizes directly correlate to the quality of noise that you're going to get in your pictures. The way these sensors collect light is through elements called photocytes that then collect photons. So the larger the sensor, the larger the surface area, hence more quality light, hence less noise at a higher ISO, which means better low light performance, hence better images. When you look at two cameras and they're made by the same manufacturer um, and you're wondering why is this one, you know, uh, $1,300 and this one is $3,000, it's most likely because uh, obviously it'll have uh, extra features, but one is going to be full frame and the other one is going to be APS-C. So the larger uh, the sensor, uh, the less noise signature that's going to be apparent that to the eye. The best practices is to keep your ISO as low as you're comfortable with, right? Um, don't use your ISO as a crutch because you have other options. You have the, the f-stop to give you more brightness if you need to, lower your f-stop. You also have the shutter speed if you need to. And if you, if you want more light, throw your camera on a tripod and you're able to lower your um, shutter speed. Um, and you know, you won't get blurred because you're on a tripod. So that wraps up our exposure triangle series. We covered f-stop, shutter speed, and in this video, ISO. 